Hello, today we're going to talk about Marxism, which is uh, the subject of uh, uh, base and superstructure. With that, I'll leave the subject to T to follow up. All right, thank you. So Marx thought that society consisted of a base that influences and creates the superstructure. And these two things have a reciprocal relationship that influence each other. Now, for Marx, the base is kind of the core the root of society. And of course, we know that for Marx, the base of society would be economic relations. Specifically, what consists in the base would be the means of production, which I discussed in earlier videos, the relations of production and the mode of production. Now, the relations of the production would be any given person's relation to the means of production. So if you own the means of production, then you would be a part of the class of bourgeoisie, and bourgeoisie would be your relation to the means of production or your relation to production. Whereas if you uh, work for, uh, the, for members of the bourgeoisie, then you would be considered a proletarian and a part of the class of uh, the proletariats. And, that, and uh, proletarian would be your relation to the means of production. And these two things, that is what decides the, well, the things, the, the uh, means of production and the relations of production, that is what the deci decides the uh, economic, uh, the whole economic system of a society. And the whole economic soci system of the society would be the mode of production. So for Marx, basically the mode of production, w which consists of the relations and means of production, that is what constitutes the base. And from the base arises the superstructure, which that's the non-material uh, kind of non-tangible, non not, not directly tangible at least, uh, concepts in society. So that would be like the modern political sphere of a society. That would be the, you know, the predominant ideology of a society. That would be like familial structures, stuff like that. So economic relations, that is what gives rise to the subjective superstructure of a society. Now, to Marx, these two things, as I said earlier, they have a reciprocal relationship. And that means that the base doesn't just give rise to the superstructure and that's it. In Marx's view, the base gives rise to the superstructure and then the superstructure influences and changes the base. And then this new altered base would change the superstructure. So it's kind of a reciprocal relationship. So an example of this would be like the civil rights movement, for example, that happened in the 60s. So prior to the civil rights movement, uh, black people were not given the same rights as white people in America. And um, black people could not own property, they could not start their own businesses, they could not uh, take ownership of the means of production. Only white people were allowed to do that. So that means that white pe or sorry, black people were barred from the position of being bourgeois. So black people could not be a part of the class of the bourgeoisie. But with the civil rights movement, which was a change in the superstructure that resulted from the base, and the base was that only white people could own the means of production and be part of the bourgeoisie, that, le that oppression in the superstructure, or sorry, that oppression in the base led to a change in the superstructure and the black uh, and uh, the black liberation movement started to rise up out of as a result of that uh, oppression from the base and this change in the superstructure led to a change in the base where um, civil rights were, were for black people were established and uh, black people can now own property and be part of the class of the bourgeoisie so that change in the superstructure which was a result of the uh, previous base of society resulted in a change of the base of society. So that is kind of a pretty brief overview of the Marxist concepts of base and superstructure. superstructure. Okay, with that, thank you for watching and you have a nice day.